and welcome to another tutorial. In this short bonus tutorial, I would like to show you two ways on how to style your scenes a bit differently. For that, I prepared a very simple scene. So you see, it basically just hosts one molecule. Then there is a plane underneath it. We have one light source and the camera is there. And if I go into the rendered mode, you also see that I have very simple materials applied. So for this tutorial, I went for a very non-glossy look. So all our materials are very uh, smooth looking in that case. What I would like to show you now is how to create outlines to your uh, rendering to give it a more comic like look. And that's something that can actually be done quite quickly in Blender because there is a presetting that you just need to activate. That setting can be found in the render properties. And if you go down at the very bottom, there is an option called freestyle and you just tick that one. If you enlarge the box, there are a couple of options that you can choose, but there is more to be changed if you go into the viewer layer properties and go down again. And I'm just going to close the tabs so that it's easier to see. There is freestyle, freestyle line set and freestyle line style. The freestyle line style is probably the one that you might want to use the most because it gives you options on the thickness of the line and also how to change the color of the line. I'm going to stay for the color and for the um, thickness both with the standard settings and I'm going to leave it up to you to discover that section on your own. We are also going to have a short look into the freestyle line set as well, because that's important for us for that scene. But first of all, let's give our test scene a quick render, because the thing is, even though you activated the freestyle option, it does not show up in your uh, preview. In order to have a quick render, I just set my render settings to a lower number of samples and also only half of the resolution is chosen so that it's a bit uh, faster for us to do. So let's render that scene quickly and see what's happening here. At first, it looks like uh, that it looks like a very standard like rendering with no changes at all. But as soon as the image is finished, there are some additional calculations done that basically calculate the outlines of the scene and they are added on top of your scene. And uh, as soon as that's finished, the outlines appear. There are a couple of things that are a bit strange for our molecule here, and I would like to go through all of them and correct them as well. The first thing that is very obvious is that the geometry of our bonds is also visible in the outline rendering. So you see the bonds are built up with tiny elements that look like a cylinder and they are just stacked on top of each other. Um, I, to be honest, I think it looks uh, very nice uh, to have those lines here, but of course it's a bit distracting. So if you would like to have a cleaner version where only the outline is visible, I'm going to show you how to change the settings. The second thing is, and I'm going to zoom in for that, there are some tiny dots in the middle of our spheres from the atoms, also here for the hydrogen. Not everywhere, it depends on the shading, but in that case they are nicely visible here. This is also something that is a bit disturbing and we are also going to solve that. So let's close our test rendering and first I'm going to take care of the tiny dots that, that appear. And if I zoom in quite closely, you see there is some kind of defect on our molecule. I would like to just solve that in a very quick and more or less dirty way. So what we are going to do is we are going to just rotate our spheres so that this uh, defect is basically covered by the bond so it's not visible anymore. Of course, that's not possible if you select the carbons like that. And if you would perform a rotation there, you see that all of the, the spheres are actually rotating around one point. However, you can go into the menu on the right side, select the carbon ball and also unhide it select that one and perform the rotation here. And now you see that basically the defect is gone and all of the balls perform the same rotation separately. And then you can hide the, the dummy atom basically in the middle again, and you can do the same thing for hydrogen. 
just unhide it, perform a simple rotation so that the defect is not visible to the camera anymore and hide the, the dummy atom in the middle again. So this is everything you need to do to take care of the defect. Concerning the bonds, we just need to make a tiny adjustment in the, the style of our, um, of our outline. And that is done in the freestyle line set. And you just need to untick the border command here. So if you untick that and let's give our scene a test rendering again. And as soon as the outline is calculated, you also see that the, the, uh, the lines on the bonds are not visible anymore. And it's really just the outline of our molecule. Good. A second thing that I would like to introduce to you is uh, transparency when it comes to the background of our scene. Let's jump into the rendered view. And if you go into the render properties and to the film section, there is a submenu which is called transparent. I ticked that already, but if you untick it, you see that the background has that normal gray that normally shows up. If you tick transparency, it's replaced by a checked um, pattern. And that is something that indicates that everything with the check checked pattern is going to be transparent. That can be super useful if you would like to do some kind of composing again with your image. That means you would like to put your rendering on top of another image. And wouldn't it be great in that case to also be able to get rid of the plane, but just keep the shadow? The nice thing is that Blender has a solution for that as well. So you just select the plane and then you go into the object properties. And if you go down to visibility, there is something which is called shadow catcher. And if you activate shadow catcher, the plane disappears, but the shadow actually stays. And this is exactly what you would like to have to do some kind of composing in the end. I'm going to give that scene a render now. And for that, I'm not going to use the outline. So I'm going to deactivate them again. I'm going to increase the number of samples. And I'm also going to increase the resolution to 100% again. Let's see if the denoise is activated. That's activated as well. That's perfect. And then I'm going to show you as soon as this rendering is finished, how you could handle composing, for example, afterwards. So let's render that quickly. And I'm going to see you afterwards when it's finished. So the rendering is finished and you nicely see that our shadow is still there, but the rest is transparent. If you save the image now, make sure that you save it as a PNG and also for the color settings, go for the RGBA. The A in that case stands for alpha channels and the alpha channels are responsible for the transparency. So make sure that this is activated as well. Then just save it to your folder. And to show you how composing could work, I prepared a simple PowerPoint file where I got an image from a database and you can just say, uh, paste your image that you just rendered to that scene. And then you see that the image somehow looks integrated into the uh, image that we have underneath. So the shadow is perfectly positioned there. It's also a bit transparent, so it's see-through. It looks like a real sh shadow would approximately look like. And uh, it looks like the benzene would be sitting on that road. Of course, in that case, you need to make sure that the perspective of the image that you use and your rendering is somehow aligned to each other. The better those two things fit, the more realistic it's going to look like in the end. Good. Just uh, a short hint, if you would like to combine the shadow catcher in combination with the outlines. So I'm going to reactivate the outlines again. And I'm also going to use the standard settings for those. So reactivate the border as well. And if I'm going to give that a quick test render again, so I'm going to go down with the resolution again to make it a bit faster. 
you now see that, that not only the outline is rendered, but also, of course, the outline from our plane that serves as the shadow catcher is there. And of course, that's something that's a bit annoying and is disturbing in that scene. This is not an issue. So let's go back again. That's not an issue. If you unselect the border command, because then also the line is not going to show up in your final render because the border is gone, basically. However, if you would like to keep the border style, it's a good idea to um, use a quick and dirty solution for that. So you can just... I'm going to go into the solid mode so it's easier to see. You can just scale up your plane to a size where it's uh, covering the complete frame. So then of course no border is visible anymore and that would be a quick and dirty solution on how to get rid of the line in case you would like to use the border. If you don't want to use it, you can untick it and your the, the border from the plane is not going to show up. Good. So much for that short tutorial. I hope you found uh, a bit of inspiration concerning the styling of your scene. So um, maybe the outline is something for you. The shadow catcher is for sure something that is quite useful to use, especially when it comes to composing. And I hope you are satisfied with your scene as well. And see you probably in the next bonus tutorial. Bye.